If you found this video, you're looking for information on <clears throat> making your sockets more high visibility. If you see this, this is an example of a non-high visibility. This is a before shot for me. And this is an after shot for one that I've done. I don't know if you can see it or not. You'll notice it pops a bit more because it's yellow on the 14. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm making this video because there's a lot of videos. Well, I don't know about a lot. There's two or three videos out there that where I got the idea from, but they don't really talk about technique a lot. Uh, so, for instance, <clears throat> perfect example here. These are real thin lines, okay, on this. Um, when I started out doing this, I started out with the Sharpie. I think I had an even thicker point, but uh, use that, and that is called the uh, fine point sharpie, believe it or not. Anyways, you quickly realize you dispense a lot of paint on here, and when you're painting them to get it to turn out good, the main thing is it's sort of like walking a balancing act between putting the right amount of paint on there and not too much so you don't have to remove it, because... Uh, when I first tried to do this, I tried to use alcohol to manipulate, you know, uh, and to clean it up, like right after I put it down, and that's just a endless battle because you just wipe it off, put it on, wipe it off, you take off too much, it just doesn't look good, not even, yada, yada, yada. So I've discovered sort of the right mix of how to do it, I think. Um, I'm using turtle wax. Uh, I'll put this down here and show you real quick. I'm using a turtle wax chrome polish okay uh, you should have uh, alcohol on hand but uh, the chrome polish really is the magic ingredient on this uh, uh, situation so let's get to it so I use the the um, sharpie to begin with like I said then I'm like well I need something really better than that sort of more controlled so this is uh, called a I think it's super fine or ultra fine here, I'll look at, here, this is what it is. I'll let you look at that real quick. Um, I don't know the, um, I'm trying to see here what it says as far as the, I think it's ultra fine or super fine. Anyways, you want a point that's sort of like this to work with, on your sockets at least. Um, if you're painting your case, uh, like the digits on your case so you can see about a blown mold case you need a little bit thicker matter of fact I wouldn't use the paint if you can avoid it you could use the uh, uh, just markers really it's a lot more easy to control all right so we'll move forward here we're showing you so this is how I do it this is what I found it works really good you put the paint on to about three different sockets assuming you can move through them pretty quickly you want the idea is you want the paint to Cure just enough to where it's going to stick in that ridge, but not enough to where it's hard to get off of the socket. Okay? So, um, have yourself something ready uh, with a little dab. Here, I'll show it real quick. little dab of uh, the chrome polish already on it, real thinly applied. Uh, sort of like this. Just real thinly applied under the under the uh, under the paper towel. Have that ready and set to the side, and then grab you about three sockets and uh, watch what happens here. I'm gonna do. Hold on, I got the one I've already done. I think yeah, that was the one I already did. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> I'll grab you three sockets. I'm gonna start with a 17. All right. <clears throat> We're going to go like that. As fast as you can, but it also controlled. See how nice and controlled that is? Not a lot of sloppy paint. So that's 17 that I'm doing. I'm going to do 18 here. Uh, 
I might have got, well, I'll just be quiet here. So that's 18. Nice and controlled. I mean, you could do it with the other marker, but it's create you're creating a lot of work with the other markers size, the tip sizes. And then 19. Got to do them fast. Oops, messed up a little bit. Then immediately after you get this done, go back to the first one that you did. Do them three at a time because I started out trying to do a bunch of them all at once like a factory. Not good because this paint gets super dry and once it gets super dry, you're just making more work for yourself getting it off. Uh, I think one of the other videos said let it sit overnight. I mean, wipe it off, but then let it sit overnight. I don't agree with that. So here's how I do it. So that's done, right? So now we'll go back to the first one that we did. Right here. No. That can't be it. Oh. <laughs> I was looking at the... I had already done one side of it. All right. So this is uh, this is the after of the other side, by the way. Uh, but anyway, so this is the side. You don't want to dilly-dally here. So this is the side here that I just did. It's, it's semi-curing. I'm going to take this pad that I showed you that's got a little bit of chrome polish on it. You need to get it wet with that chrome polish quickly, but don't linger. See how that wipes right off pretty much? I mean, you got a couple little clumps. If it doesn't come off the first time, hit it again with the wet chrome polish, a real small amount, and just wipe it off. And there you have it. You got a high def socket. Move through the other three real quick. We'll just run through them here, hopefully. Same concept, same exact concept. Hit it with the wet stuff. Switch down to the dry cloth. Hit it again. See how it's sort of come clean with the wet dry don't use alcohol because the alcohol i mean it can work but it's a lot more arduous you got it, it gets down more into the crevice it cleans that out and then you can't you're basically cleaning out the part you're trying to highlight with the alcohol it happens too easily uh so anyways i'm not sure if you can see that i'm trying to show the camera yeah so now it's nice and clean you can see that 18 do the 19. That's the third one we had. Probably need to refresh a little bit on our uh, chrome polish. Again, really thin, really uh, conservative amount right there. Just wipe over it. A little bit of pressure, and then switch down to a dry cloth. Don't sit up sit up there with that wet stuff on it for long because you don't want to like i said it's a balancing act you want to leave that stuff down on the ridges so you can see it it's easier the deeper the ridges the the easier it's going to be to do this um, you also find that sockets are sort of stamped um, inconsistently some of them you know i may have this side and these are pretty good but i may have this side nice and deeply stamped which is good from doing this process and then this other one might, I don't know, somebody went to lunch or whatever, and it's half stamped. So it'll end up looking meh. So it varies, but it's generally consistent if you got a decent quality socket, I think. So there you have it. I just wanted to um, teach you what I learned through trial and error or try to share it. And you choose to do what you want to with it. So here, I'm going to show you right next to it. I don't really have any. Uh, here, I'll show you a before. So that's a before type scenario and that's an after so you can pick any color um you know that's a whole different googling process but um you're looking at oil-based paints or um the things that i actually discovered later in the process i'll show you here real quick are the uh metallic sharpies they come with a green a blue and a red uh metallic sharpies sell them at walmart um they're easy to control very easy to control for like here i'll show you some of the stuff i did over on the for like this 
Uh, I did this one with the yellow oil base because I didn't have one with the markers, but these up here, for instance, those I did with the markers I just showed you. Um, and the good thing about the markers, like I said, is you can control them. You can control them a lot better. You do it with the paint, you can get, it'll get down here on the, and you gotta do all sorts of cleanup and stuff. So, also, I'm in the middle of doing this entire case here. Um, so don't get caught up on these colors up here. I'm in the process of figuring out my color scheme in general, but you can see, uh, this is my point. These have not been done at all yet up here. See how you can see them sort of, but not, but then down here, you can pretty clearly see, you know, all the sizes. So just some food for thought. Also, if you're wondering what the blue is, um, I got that idea off of another video. You th thought it sounded stupid, um, but I'm going to mark all the metrics in blue. And I think I might do this in orange along the bottom. Um, they're rubber bands. Some guy's daughter apparently discovered you could put rubber bands around the bottom. Well, like I said, when I first heard about it, I thought it was stupid. But it is sort of nice. They don't like they don't roll around in the case as as uh, as much. And the other side thing in some of these uh cases these fall out a lot in some of these little areas these holes the rubber the little additional rubber helps them like stick not in all of them i mean this rattles okay but this you gotta look like little push it in a little bit and, and i like that portion so anyways um as you can tell or not as you can tell um, I've done the yellow down here and the oil based um, super fine, or no, not super fine. I think I use medium. You want to use a, a medium sized tip on this because you the main thing is keeping the mess off this uh, bottom part. That's going to be your enemy. And then up here, I used uh, the uh, marker. Okay, I finished the entire case. Obviously, the bottom is metric. Yellow yellow and blue and i forgot to mention you can get these rubber bands at the dollar store uh or walmart i think um real cheap like a dollar for like 500 or something like that anyways you can see the difference in the high def uh pretty easily on the yellow then up to um these guys up here different color scheme i used white not as defined but it'll do i left one of these off which you can't really doesn't really show real good in the video um just to show you what the little ones look like it's harder to get the little ones to show up good um that's a quarter anyways i left one of these i don't know if you can tell um it's more subtle with white but i don't use fractional that much uh or sae so i don't really care but anyways and also the stamping is variable too. So of these five that I'm showing you, one of them has not had any sort of a high def treatment on it. So can you guess what it is? It's up to you. It's the middle one, the three fourths. Uh, I just thought I'd throw that in there for you all to consider. See how it's nice and popping over here. It's, you know, you can sort of tell on the three fourths or not, but it really pops on the other ones. You can sort of tell the three fourths is lacking a little bit, but it really, not really pops. It pops. It doesn't pop as good as the yellow for sure. But anyways, just to give you an idea of the finished product, those are rubber bands too, the orange. I just like them, that color. So, And the other beautiful thing about the rubber bands is if you don't like it and put it on there, it's really easy to change. You can recolor coat the whole, whole thing in about 10 minutes.